In the previous video, we have just seen the plot of JV characteristic for a PN junction diode and the Shockley equation that describes the JV characteristic of the ideal diode. In this video, we will discuss how to derive the Shockley equation. This video is for those of you who want a deeper understanding of the physics behind the current density voltage relationship for a PN junction in the dark. To simplify the derivation of the current density voltage relationship for a PN junction diode in the dark, we will make five assumptions. The first assumption is the Boltzmann approximation of the Fermi Dirac distribution function. We will discuss this approximation in detail in the next slide. The second assumption is the abrupt depletion layer. This means that the depletion region has abrupt edges and the semiconductor is charge neutral outside of the depletion region. Thirdly, we assume a low charge carrier injection condition. This means that the concentration of majority carriers in the quasi-neutral region does not change significantly under applied bias voltage. The fourth assumption is that there is no electric field and no generation of mobile charge carriers in the quasi-neutral regions. The fifth assumption is that the individual electron and hole currents are constant across the depletion region. This assumption means that there is no recombination and no thermal generation of carriers in the depletion region. The Fermi-Dirac distribution function gives the probability that a quantum state at the energy E will be occupied by an electron. At an elevated temperature, the allowed energy states above Fermi level can be occupied. When the distance between an energy state and the Fermi level is much larger than the product of the Boltzmann constant and temperature, the exponential term in the dominator, denominator of the Fermi Dirac function becomes much larger than 1. In this case, the Fermi Dirac function can be approximated to this simple exponential term. This equation is known as the Maxwell-Boltzmann approximation or simply Boltzmann approximation. This figure shows the Fermi-Dirac distribution function as the blue line and the Boltzmann function as the red line. The horizontal axis is the energy of a quantum state and the vertical axis is the probability of an energy state to be occupied by an electron. We see from this figure the range of energies over which the Boltzmann approximation is valid. Before we derive the current voltage relationship, we look at the distribution of charge carrier concentration in a PN junction. This is a graph showing the concentration profile of a PN junction at thermal equilibrium. The vertical axis is the carrier concentration in logarithmic scale and the horizontal axis is the position in a PN junction. In the p-type region, we have a high concentration of holes, which equals to ionized acceptor concentration and a much lower concentration of electrons. While in n-type region, we have a high concentration of electrons, which is equal to the ionized donor concentration and a much lower hole concentration. When we simply connect the electron and the hole concentrations at two edges of the depletion region, we obtain this figure. The figure indicates how hole and electron concentrations change in the depletion region at thermal equilibrium. In the next step, we show the expressions for calculating the carrier concentrations. At thermal equilibrium, a building voltage is developed across the depletion region. This building voltage is responsible for balancing the diffusion and drift currents. The majority carriers experience the building voltage as a potential barrier which they have to overcome in order to cross the depletion region. 
This is the equation for the building voltage in the depletion region we have seen before. We rearrange this equation in order to get expression for the intrinsic concentration of charge carriers at thermal equilibrium as function of the concentration of dopants and the building voltage. Let's calculate the carrier concentration in the n-type and p-type semiconductor. If we assume complete ionization of dopant atoms, we can write that the electron concentration in the n-type material is equal to the donor concentration and the concentration of holes in the p-type material is equal to the acceptor concentration. The concentration of minority carriers in both regions is calculated as the ratio of the square of intrinsic carrier concentration to the concentration of majority carriers. The concentration of majority carriers is equal to the concentration of dopant atoms. Using the rearranged equation of building voltage for expressing the square of intrinsic concentration, we get an equation which relates the whole concentration in the n-type region to the whole concentration in the p-type region. Similarly, we get an, equ an equation which relates the electron concentration in the p-type region to the electron concentration in the n-type region. Let me remind you that these equations hold under thermal equilibrium. This is the carrier concentration profile in a p-n junction under forward bias voltage. The blue lines show concentration profile of holes and the red lines show concentration profiles of electrons. The dotted lines describe the carrier concentrations at thermal equilibrium while the solid lines describe the carrier concentration under forward bias. When a p-n junction is under forward bias condition, the electrostatic potential difference across the depletion region is reduced by the applied voltage. Since the potential difference is smaller than at thermal equilibrium, the diffusion of the carriers from regions of high concentration is not compensated by the drift. Therefore, at the edges of the depletion region, the concentration of minority carriers will become higher than their concentration of at thermal equilibrium. These extra minority carriers at the edges of the quasi-neutral regions diffuse further into these regions. While they diffuse, they recombine with the majority carriers. Their concentration decreases, and after a certain distance, their concentration reaches the concentration at thermal equilibrium. When a p-n junction is under forward bias, we can replace the built-in voltage in the equation by a new potential difference across the depletion region. The new potential difference is the built-in voltage lowered by the applied voltage. When we look at the equations for the minority carrier concentration, we notice that it is proportional to the exponent of the applied voltage. Therefore, in forward co bias condition, we have a higher minority carrier concentration at the edge of the depletion region, which depends on the size of the applied external voltage. Remember that when a p-n junction is at dark, we assume that there is no electric field and no additional carrier generation in quasi-neutral regions. When a forward bias voltage is applied to a p-n junction diode, the concentration of minority carriers at the edges of the depletion region is higher than their concentration at thermal equilibrium. Away from the edges of the depletion region, concentration of minority carriers will decrease down to the concentration at thermal equilibrium due to the recombination with majority carriers in the quasi-neutral region. To derive the concentration profile of minority carriers in a p-n junction under forward bias voltage, we begin with the continuity equations for electrons and holes. 
In general, the continuity equations describe the behavior of charge carriers as a function of time and space coordinates. First, we simplify the continuity equations by assuming the flow of carriers only in one dimension. These are the continuity equations for electrons and holes in the p-type and n-type region, respectively. In the equation for electrons in the p-type region, delta n is the excess electron concentration with respect to their equilibrium concentration. In the equation, we see the rate of change of the excess electron concentration is the sum of contributions from electrons, diffusion, drift, generation and recombination. The same goes for the holes in the n-type region. Delta P is the excess hole concentration in the n-type region. I stress it again that we are deriving the excess minority carrier concentration in the quasi-neutral region. Due to our assumptions, the equations will be strongly simplified. First, we assume no electric field in the quasi-neutral region. Next, there is no generation of minority carriers when a p-n junction diode is at dark. Furthermore, we assume that the diode operates at steady state, so the overall change of excess carriers is zero. These are simplified one-dimensional continuity equations for electrons in the p-type region and holes in the n-type region, respectively. We see that at steady state and at dark, the equations contain only terms related to diffusion and recombination. In the equations, tau n and tau p are lifetimes of minority carriers in the p-type region and minority holes in the n-type region, respectively. The n and the p are the diffusion coefficients of electrons and holes, respectively. To solve the equations, we need to introduce two boundary conditions, because we have equations containing second derivative. For excess electrons in the p-type region, we know the electron concentration at the edge of the depletion region and the concentration far away from the edge of the depletion region. The excess electron concentration at the edge of the depletion region is the electron concentration there when external voltage is applied minus the electron concentration at thermal equilibrium. The excess electron concentration in the p-type region far away from the depletion region is a finite number. The similar boundary conditions hold for the holes in the n-type region. After solving the equations, we get the distribution of excess minority carriers in the p-type and n-type region. We see that the minority carrier concentration decreases exponentially with the increasing depth in the quasi-neutral region. When deriving the current density, voltage relationship for a p-n junction diode at dark, we assume that electron and hole current densities are constant through the depletion region. We can determine the current density caused by the minority carriers at the edges of the depletion region since only the diffusion components determine the current density at this position. The minority carrier diffusion currents can be calculated using Fick's first law. Knowing the minority carrier distribution in the quasi-neutral regions, the current density can be found. Once we determine the current density at the edges of the depletion region, and taking the assumption of the constant current density throughout the depletion region into account, the net current density is then the sum of the minority carrier diffusion currents at the edges of the depletion regions. At the end, we can arrive at the equation of the total current as the sum of individual electron and hole currents. 
the equation describing current density voltage relationship of a p-n junction diode is known as the Shockley equation. Due to the assumptions, it is called the ideal diode equation. It describes the current density voltage behavior of an ideal p-n junction diode over a wide range of applied voltages. The G naught in the equation is known as the saturation current density. Under forward bias, there is an enhanced recombination in the quasi-neutral regions between the majority carriers and increased concentration of minority carriers due to their larger diffusion through the depletion region. This recombination leads to a lower concentration of the majority carriers in the quasi-neutral regions compared to the one under equilibrium. The drop in the majority carrier concentration is balanced by the injection of the majority carriers from the external voltage source. In this way, the net current flows through the external circuit and through the p-n junction diode under forward bias. Often, this current is called a recombination current since it is caused by the recombination of the excess minority carriers. We can see from the Shockley equation that the current increases exponentially with the applied forward bias voltage, while under reverse bias, the current is almost independent of the applied reverse bias voltage. The extremely small net current at the reverse bias condition is represented by the drift of a very small number of minority carriers across the junction. G naught, the saturation current density, is an important parameter for designing a solar cell. The G naught is an indication of how large the recombination in the p-n junction is. Since recombination annihilates the carriers, a small saturation current density is desired to have well-performed solar cell. G naught is proportional to the concentration of minority carriers and is inversely proportional to their diffusion length. We will discuss in more detail the effect of these parameters of G naught and the influence of G naught on the performance of a solar cell in the later part of the course.